What's up, YouTube? Your boy back once again with another sports topic. And today, we're going to talk some football. Like I told y'all in the last video, I'm going to start breaking down positions that the Texans, that I think the Texans will target. I did that in the last video. I, I brought to y'all positions that I think the Texans will target in the draft. Now, I want to talk about some players. I want to put some players to those positions. Um, you know, you know, the Texans don't have a pick into the third round. So, the guys I'm going to be talking about, I'm not talking about the best. I'm not going to talk about guys who considered the first first round picks or early second round picks. I'm talking about guys who were mid seconds later on in the draft. It's not a lot of them. It's just a, it's just a couple of names that don't be surprised if you hear these names targeted with the Texans or if on draft night one of these guys have been drafted. And I'm gonna do tight ends today because I do feel that tight end is something that they will address soon. I mean I mean early. I think that would be one of their first two picks will be a tight position. That's just how I feel. Uh, especially, you know, with CJ retiring, the the need at tight end. Because even with even when CJ was healthy, CJ was a good tight end. But I think we've always felt that we could do something more with that position. Now that with CJ being retired and like I said, Griffin had two concussions last year. Um um Steven Anderson had, he had he had a couple of concussions, not two. But he had a concussion, and then he also had other injuries. Plus, like I said, he's more of a he's more of a hybrid. He's more of a, a tweener between the tight end and the receiver. He's more of an in between type player. So to get you a full fledged tight end like a a guy that we consider like a Travis Kelsey type, you know, like uh, Jimmy Graham when he was in his prime, uh, Gronk. We would love to have a Gronk type player. So. That's what I think they. I think they're gonna try to uh, get a tight end early. And with this draft here, outside of the dude from uh, Oklahoma, who I've seen him like mostly late, mid to late first round, and then like early second. Every other tight end has been everywhere else. Has been mid second, late second, mid third, late third, fourth. Right? Like I seen these. Guys, I, so I don't know if it's that they feel that the tight end position is so weak. That's pushed down, or if it's so strong that you can get tight end later, so you don't have to like like reach for a tight end, or because other positions of other boards are going to be ticking up high, tight ends are going to get continue to push down. Like I said, you could get four quarterbacks taken in the first four in the first five picks. First five picks can be quarterbacks. First six can be five. You can have five quarterbacks taken in the first six to seven picks. I'm not. I don't really think that's going to happen, but. I wouldn't be surprised if quarterback goes one, two, three, five, and six. Even though I know the Colts have the six pick, but the Colts can trade out that six pick. Or if it go one, two, three, four, five, because Buffalo moves up to that fourth pick. Like I, I would not be surprised if that happened. I'm not saying that's gonna happen, but that wouldn't shock me. I don't think none of these quarterbacks should go that high. But we already know what type of league we in. But we're gonna talk about tight ends. These are not Pacific order. This is more of the order that I watch them in, not as a ranking. First name I'm gonna do is I, I might say his, I might say his name wrong, so don't try to get me, go me in the comment section because I, I will pronounce the name wrong. Troy Fuagawi, uh, tight end from Wisconsin, 6'6", two, uh, 248. The when I was watching film, I really liked the way he was playing. I'm not saying that he's Gronk, but he had some of the same attributes. Some of the some of the plays that he made are reminiscent of Gronk plays. Like some of the catches he was making, some of the weird catches he made looked like some catches that Gronk made. Like with New England, like, it, it looked very reminiscent. And the opposing team would put their number one corner on him, so he was getting their number one corner. So that shows you that he was at least for Wisconsin. A force. I ain't watch a lot. I ain't watch Wisconsin. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't watch. I ain't watch their games. I just watch a film of him. In the film I sent him, it was the they was the the um announcers kept on uh, reiterating that that was the that's the team's number one corner that he's doing that on. He's doing that on number one corner. So for a team to put they folk to put their number one corner on this guy shows that they felt that he was their biggest threat in the passing game. So we would love to have something like that. The the knockout him, he's a little, like. He's a little bit smaller. I mean, he's 6'6", but he's 248. And his hand size, he got small hands. He's what, like his hands is 963? Mm, he got smaller hands, especially compared to the rest of the guys I'm about to name. So that like that would be my, that's my knock on him from what I've seen. Other than that, I, I really like him. And 
I see him rated as a second round, third round pick. And like the reason why I'm even guys see him in the second round because the Texans do have picks next year. They got two twos next year. They might they got two twos, three threes. They might pack if they see somebody they they gotta have. Like we we can't let this guy go no further. We gotta get this guy. They might try to jump up into the second round. I had more I think with Rick, if Rick was a GM, I felt more definitely that they were gonna try to get a second round pick with um um, this guy with um with games, I think they're gonna stand packed. Also, you gotta remember that these some of these guys are seniors, and Bill O'Brien was at the senior bowl. He coached the senior bowl, so he sees some of these guys like right up front. So he might be like, "Hey, I want this kid. I want this kid right here." Another name, Dallas Gobert, Gilbert, Golder, Gilder. Uh, so I, I know I fucked up a name. Uh, tight end out of South Dakota State, six five. 255, the way he was playing and, the, and what I seen, he was very athletic. He looked like a young, he looked like a new, a new Orleans, Jimmy Graham. Not saying he's Jimmy Graham, but I'm saying he looked, he looked, the play style looked like he was, in, he was very dominant, very dominant. But got, got nice size hands, 10, uh, 10, uh, 10 inch, uh, 13 hands. But my thing is, was it more of him being dominant or more of the lack of competition? Like that, that's a knock on him. He played with South Dakota State. So he wasn't playing against the, the best of the best. I mean, at least full guy was playing in the Pac-10. I mean, the uh, not Pac-10, the, uh, the Big Ten. So he, he played with a weaker, he played against weaker competition. So I don't know if it was more so. Him just being that damn good, or if him, you know, he was just playing against weak competition. He was just dominating on weak competition. He's okay tight end, but he's dominating on weak competition. I don't know. I mean, Carson Wentz played against. He played at South Dakota State, and he was playing against weak competition. And if he wouldn't have got hurt, he was been the MVP. He should have been MVP, even though he got hurt because he only missed like three games, and he still had bad numbers in time breaking one MVP. But that's a conversation for another video. So. I mean, you really can't really. I mean, sometimes just good players just play on back, just play in in weaker competition. Garoppolo played in the weaker competition, so that's my knock on him right there. But from what I seen, I, I like what I seen. I, I like what I seen. I wouldn't mind having a text now. I like what I seen. Uh, the next guy is uh, Hayden Hurst, South Carolina tight end, uh, six five, two fifty, hands. Okay, nine uh, nine seventy five hands. Play in South Carolina, and if you know this team's history, we get a we we get a lot of South Carolina players. I mean, the owner Bob in there came from South Carolina. That's that's his school, you know. Came from South Carolina. You no know, Clowney first overall pick South Carolina. Even though we didn't draft J Joe, but we keep giving J Joe contract after contract after contract. South Carolina guy. We draft the swear just South Carolina guy. Um, back in the day, Dante Robinson, South Carolina guy. You know, I'm naming mostly the uh, DBs. Um, it's another corner that we drafted from South Carolina too, after Dante Robinson. Uh, Fagans, that's what it was. It was Fagans, South Carolina guy. They, 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 they get. You no, know, we get. You no, know, now we getting clear some guys, but they do get South Carolina guys. Remember that is the owners of uh, alma mater. So. You think that they would like him? Um, well, I see he looked like he's a fast tight end. Like he didn't have the fastest forty out of all these tight ends, but on game film, like the game film that I watched, out of all these tight ends, he looked the fastest on the field. Like that's why you can't always judge forties because I know Jalen Strong had J Jalen Strong had a nice forty. Jalen Strong didn't look that fast on the field. He didn't look as fast as his forty time said. Hopkins didn't have a good forty. And Hopkins is not a burner, but Hopkins looks faster than what his 40 gives you, what his 40 tells you. Some people can have speed, have track speed, track speed, but don't have game speed, don't have on the field speed. Some people who, they 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 not all that fast on the track, but it's something about playing in the game with those, like, even though like, they, they, they are basically they playing at the same exact speed, whether they on the track or not. And some people who are fast off the field, and they're fast on track, they slow down when they playing in the game. This dude here, he's playing. Like he he looked, he was the fastest tight end. All these tight ends I'm talking about, 
He looked, he was the fastest on the field. Also, they used him in a lot of different ways. They used him like run. They was they used him in rushing. They used him to let him run the ball. They did tight end passes when he was throwing the ball back. And you already know Bill O'Brien loves he loves versatility. That's that's his, that's his shit. Versatility. A whole bunch of players, they can do a whole bunch of stuff. Like he always gets players who can do stuff. And it kind of reminds me, because the way he does it, which is good, to get people who do multiple things. But Bill O'Brien goes overboard with it. Because it kind of reminds me of, you know, every, like, if you've if you ever been to like a small country town, they all got that one restaurant that serves all type of food fried chicken, tacos. Hamburgers, pizzas, uh, um, they have like some like uh, sushi or some other, like, they got all different type of food. But ain't none of it really good. Like, it's okay, but none of it is like extremely good. Like, man, yeah, I got that. I love that shit over there. Like, it's okay. Because they serve everything. So it's like they don't specialize in nothing. They just good. They okay with everything. That's the type of players Bill O'Brien gets when he gets these versatile players who can do multiple stuff. Nobody can do a lot of stuff well. Like, um, Alpha Blue. Alpha Blue could do stuff. Alpha Blue could uh, have back pass and he can block and he can do special teams and run. And he's a running back, but he does none of that good. Like, he does everything okay at best. He doesn't do none of it extremely well. That's a problem. Now, I'm not saying that this dude can't do anything well because, like I said, he, he looked like he was fast. He always was open. He Every time, every, uh, he was always open. Every play, every pass play that he, that he was involved in, he was always wide open. Always wide open. Like I said, he looked, he's the fastest tight end in all these tight ends. So, and I've seen the Texas name being targeted to him a lot, too, um, in some of the mocks and some of the uh, conversations that I've seen. I've seen him being tied to the Texans. I gotta say, South Carolina guy. You already know they, South Carolina. But like I said, he wouldn't be my first choice. I wouldn't mind having him, but he wouldn't be my he wouldn't be my first choice. Um, cause he um, even though he's even though he's uh, two fifty, he looks to me he looks smaller frame like uh, a full guy. Like full guy looks bigger to me. Then, uh, then, then, then Hurts does. Hurts looks like he's Smith. Now, also, he's a, he, he's a, he has a, he has, he has heart because he's a walk on. He won the scholarship guy, so he's a guy who's gonna fight for his stuff. So I will give him that. He gonna, he gonna come out there. He gonna fight for we. He gonna fight for we you know. And he gonna fight to get a position, get a spot. So we cool to have good guys like that. You know what I'm saying? Another guy, Mike Gengowski, tight end, Penn State, six six, two fifty. 10, 13 hands, dude was a beast. All right, dude was a beast. I seen him as, like, the number two tight end. Like, as far, like a lot of time I see him as the number two. It goes back between him and Dallas. Like, like you know, I, most time I see, like, the dude from Oklahoma, number one. And then number two is either Dallas or Mike. Like, a one and two. And, um, but from what I seen, dude was a beast. He should be number two, if not number one. I didn't really watch too much Oklahoma. Like, we don't really have a chance to get him unless we just jump all the way up. And I think that'd be reaching because tight end is not that big of an You're going to jump all the way up into like late first, early second. But the dude looked like a beast. And I wouldn't be surprised if he's the second tight end and took him early in the second round. But I seen some stuff him being like the third tight end taken. So just because of that, just because of the opportunity that he could be a third tight end taken. I decided to go ahead and put him on the list, but the dude was a beast, though. Like, that's just, I ain't gonna front. Dude was a beast. Last one Ian Thomas, uh, Indiana State. 6'5, 248, 9'6'3 hands, so small hands. The small, smaller guy, he's the smallest of the smallest because I've also seen some stuff that had him at like 6'3. So, like, I've seen like different things that have him, like, his height not. His height's not completely accurate. Like, so I don't I don't know which height. I, I just chose to take the tallest height just because I just want to give him the benefit of the doubt that he's he's six five. But I mean I seen stuff to him six three or six four um on different outlets. You can't trust everything's gonna end there. But the reason why I put him on him, he would probably he would probably be like the last resort tight end. He would probably be like a guy that you would take in the fourth. But the reason why I put him on him is because some of the catches he was making were very 
Hopkins-esque. Like, he was making a lot of sideline toe draggers. Those all snap. Like, it's funny. Like, the the, the, the best catches that I've seen in all these guys, the best catches that I've seen came from Fugawi and Ian Thomas. Reason, and, and it's crazy because those two are the guys with the smallest hands. Both their hands are six, or oh, I mean, nine inches, uh, uh, 6.3. I mean, uh, nine, uh, nine, nine point six three. I said that wrong, but yeah, nine point six three. They both of them had the smallest hands, but they had like Fugawi. His was more. His was catches. He the, the he was making good like one hand snaggers and and fingertip grabbers and stuff like that. And his was more footwork related. He was making a lot of catches like like regular catches, but they were in bad situations where he had to drag a toe, had to toe tap on some stuff. Very Hopkins, like sideline to sideline type stuff. So, like I said, I think that would just be more if I put them on it just because, just in case they don't target Tyreek early. I mean, they might see offensive line that they have to have, so they, they forget that. Or they see an edge rusher they got to have, so we got to get that. They see a back they got to have, they got to get that. And we can always get Ian Thomas in the, in the, uh, um, in the uh, fourth round type stuff. So that's the reason why I put them on there. Um, I think he's the least likely to be a Texan. It's especially the way I feel because I feel the Texans gonna be targeting tight end. I think it'll be more. I think the Texans, in my opinion, will end up mostly with Full Gallery or uh, Hurst out South Carolina. Both of them because we also have a lot. Of, you know, I know it's under Rick Smith, but we also have a lot of Wisconsin connections too, especially when it comes to tight end. You know, Owen Daniels, uh, uh, Gary Graham, Wisconsin tight end. So we've had. Uh, I mean, JJ. Went to school at, uh, at, at Northwestern, or was it North, not Northwestern? Was it West Wisconsin? Uh, the whatever small school he went to, if I forgot the school he went to, he went to as a tight end before he uh, before he uh, he left school and then came went to Wisconsin became became a uh, defensive end. Same thing with his brother, who's a uh, who's a linebacker. His brother's linebacker started off as a tight end too at Wisconsin. So like, man, you see why they like they changed position because Wisconsin seems like they putting out tight ends pretty regularly. It seems like, but you see the connection. So I wouldn't be surprised if one of those two guys end up being a Texan. Dallas too. Like I say, I, I think Mike is a reach because I think that he'll be taken before the Texans get the opportunity to draft him. But you never know, crazy things happen. Crazy things happen. He might be on the board around the time Texans might jump up, or he might fall to that. He, he might fall to that third round, and you might take him. You might because you feel he's the best tight end available, or the best. He was the best tight end on the board. Period. Like I felt that Deontay Foreman was one of the best running backs, and he fell all the way to the third round. I feel Deontay Foreman should have been taken late, late first, mid, late first, mid second at best, and to see him fall to us at the mid third round, late third, because like the Colts passed on on Deontay twice, not once, twice, they passed on twice, and I think the, and the Patriots passed on him, and they already at that time they lost Legarre Blunt, so all just depends on how other teams feel. That's why it's kind of hard to do a mock draft with us being so far down. So I gotta get these other guys in, but like some of these sleepers. But like I said, if I had a choice, to be honest, me personally, if I had a choice, I would take uh, Troy. Um, I, I'll take Troy if I if I if, I, if you give me a third round pick and you give me all these guys, I I'll take Troy. Even though I did say Mike is a beast, I just like the way I, I just like watching Troy. The from what I seen him, I, I like the way he played and he. Reminded me of Gronk. He did. He, he completely reminded me of, of Gronk. I'm not saying he is Gronk, but some of the stuff that he was doing, and like and teams putting a number one corner on him, him still beating a number one corner, him in double coverage on and with a number one corner on him, and him still making the play. Like man, like, I liked what I seen. So, like, share, subscribe if you haven't comment below. If you, haven't, if you disagree with me, you, you got some other Titans you think that we should target, or you just think that I'm completely crazy and I'm like out of my mind and. I, none of these Titans are good. All these Titans are trash. Whatever you, whatever you feel, comment. Let me know. Click that bell. Give my video. Subscribe. Holler at me.